Hey everyone, welcome to this install and user's guide for Horizon Plus, SAPI's SIM hub overlay for Forza Horizon 5. If you're just curious what this overlay does, check out my other video in the description below. Now, first things first, you can grab the download here at SAPI's Horizon Plus GitHub page. Head over to releases. Right now there's only 1.0, but in time it's possible you'll see newer versions. No worries, just use whatever is newest. Here, you just need the zip file, so click that and it should download automatically. You'll want a program that can unzip files, so WinRAR, 7-zip, whatever, chances are good if you have a PC, you already have one of these. Alright, now hold on to that zip file for a minute, we're gonna come back to it, but before that, we need to download and install SimHub. Go to the link in the description, click the big download button, open the zip, and run the installer. You can leave everything checked here, and make sure you keep note of where you're installing SimHub on your PC, because you will need to access the install folder in just a second. Now, something important to note here is that there is both a free and paid version of SimHub. The free version works just fine, but your overlays will be limited to 10 frames per second. If you want to pay and support the devs making these awesome tools, you can choose an amount to pay and this unlocks the smoother 60 FPS overlays, which for me is a no brainer, but obviously the choice is yours. So once SimHub is installed, locate the install folder. Now open the zip file for Horizon Plus and extract the three folders into your SimHub install folder. Here you'll also see the README and patch notes for Horizon Plus if you want to check out either of those. Now let's open up SimHub and make sure everything's working. First, if you get a prompt to use admin privileges, click enable and it'll reboot SimHub in administrator mode. Then scroll down to find Horizon 5 in the game list and click to activate it. Then hit thanks I did it when it asks about manual telemetry. Now head to dash studio, then overlays, and here you should see three saved overlay layouts for common resolutions. You'll also see all the individual elements down below here. Alright, so assuming you're all good there, let's get Horizon booted up and configure the data out. Once you're in the main menu, hit options. HUD and Gameplay, and then scroll to the bottom where you see Data Out. Turn this on, set the IP address to 127.0.0.1, which is just a special address that references the local PC, so don't worry you aren't sending your data out anywhere. And finally, set your port to 8000, and you should be all set. Now, it helps to reboot the game once, so once you're back in, we can test and see if everything works. So here I am after rebooting in the garage, and now I'm going to head back to SimHub, and click load on the overlay that matches my monitor's resolution. SimHub's main window should close and you'll see this little layout editor window. Feel free to minimize or move that for right now. And let's head out of the house where we can see SimHub is fully working and matches right in with my existing UI. And that's pretty much it for the basics. You now have a functioning install of SAPI's Horizon Plus overlay. If you want this overlay to auto load every time you boot Horizon, you can click auto on the overlay you want to use. And as long as SimHub is kept open, it should recognize when Forza launches and closes and load and unload the overlay automatically. So now let's talk about customizing Horizon Plus to your liking, starting with this layout editor window. Clicking edit layout will put you in edit mode. Now in this window, you can see all the overlay elements we have loaded, hit the X to remove them, or hit add overlay, and then add whichever elements you want to see on screen. If you, for example, use the digital tack or want bar for boost pressure, this is where you would swap those elements out. You can also see the checkbox for hiding elements when not in a race. Because Horizon is open world, this basically just hides the elements when not driving. There's no real way currently to tell SimHub whether or not you're actually in a race or just cruising or doing event labs or whatever. Now, I wouldn't recommend moving or resizing things like the attack unless needed because those fit right into the existing game UI. But for any other elements, you can click and drag these around the screen to place them or click the bottom right to resize them. When you're done, just hit stop layout edition or stop edit. And then in the editor window, make sure you save your new layout. I do recommend creating a new name for your custom layout so as not to override the default presets. All right, now let's dive a bit deeper and look at customizing data values and UI element colors within SimHub. So we're back here in the SimHub app. 
And for an example, let's change the color of the boost gauge to purple. Find the boost gauge overlay, click more, and then edit dashboard. This opens up a very powerful customization window and I'm not gonna cover everything here, but if you're a power user and really wanna tweak or add things, this menu is for you. But for now, all we want to do is change the gauge color as it fills. So we'll look for it in the screen hierarchy. There's two elements I want to change, the color while under vacuum and the boost color. So here we can see in the gauge folder are our two elements. If you're having trouble finding the right thing, you can see a preview of what's selected right below this window. Now with vacuum selected, let's scroll down in the properties and see gauge color is currently set to red. We'll click that and make it purple. Now we'll select the boost color, find gauge color, and set that to purple as well. Now let's save and exit, jump back in game, and there you have it. Our boost gauge is now fully purple. This is just a small example of the customization ability you have with this overlay. Now for a final tip, let's show how to adjust values for things like tire heat. We'll open up that same editing menu for the overlay that includes the tire temps, click on the tire element, which takes us right to the folder, and then we see a tire temps folder and we can see hot and cold elements for each tire. We'll start with cold temps for the rear right tire. You can see the background color has an effect attached to it. Click the effects window and here we can see color and value. I'm going to leave the colors alone, but change cold tires to start at 90 and end at 110. This will mean 110 degrees is the low end of my ideal tire temperature range. Now let's go to the hot setting and change the high end of optimal to 140. We'll set the mid to 145 and overheat to 200. So what we've basically just done here is shift the entire tire temp range up by about 20 degrees, meaning that the UI element will show us cooler tire colors at higher temperatures. Again, this is just another example of how powerful the customization options are for this tool. I of course can't show you everything because the possibilities are massive, but these examples should hopefully give you a pretty good starting point to give you an idea of where you should be looking if you want to tweak something. Also, please keep in mind that if and when Horizon Plus gets updated beyond 1.0, minor things like folder structure might move around, so this might not be the exact same process as it is in later versions. For example, Sappy mentioned that he may be able to eventually create a custom drop-down menu for different tire model presets, but that's likely a ways off. All right, folks, and that is gonna do it. If there's anything you wanna know how to do that wasn't mentioned in this guide, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll try to answer. If we get enough popular questions, I may even just create a pinned comment with added tips. So make sure to look out for that first if you have a question. Also, if you notice any bugs not mentioned in the readme, feel free to let Sappy know on Discord or make a post on the GitHub page. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.